Hey, this is Andrew Brown from Exam Pro, and we are at the start of our journey for the Azure Administrator, asking the most important question, what is the AZ-104? So this certification is for system administrators or those looking to become system administrators for Azure workloads. And this certification will demonstrate a person can manage, configure devices, users, permissions, general computing, cloud storage, and cloud networking. Uh, and those are basically all the uh, core services. So this is a very general certification at the associate level. The certification is referred to by its course code, the AZ-104, and that is what I'll be calling it throughout this course. And if you've taken the AZ-900, this is what people generally will take right after that certification. And usually after uh, the this AZ-104, they usually go for the AZ-303, the solutions architect. The certification is ideal for those seeking a role that is more configuration-based than having to write computer code. So if you do not fancy yourself a developer uh, or you think that's just not the skill for you, then maybe this is the certification you want to go after. Now, looking at the Azure Roadmap, we have four uh, different categories. We've got Fundamentals, Associate, Expert, and Specialty. And at the start of your journey, you're always going to want to start with the AZ-900. Uh, no matter what associate you're going for, make sure you get the certification first. But Azure has a lot of associate level certifications. It has two uh, ex expert levels and then uh, three specialties uh, currently. So again, you know, you're going to start with the AZ-900. And then once you have that certification, you get to pick whichever associate you want. So if you're looking for a general generalized role, the administrator is the most um, uh, ideal uh, certification to take. And I always say that it's very similar to the AWS Solutions Architect because it's so broad. Uh, and it's no surprise that a lot of people who take the AZ-104 are trying to become a Solutions Architect expert, okay? Now, some people aren't always ready to go to the expert level right, after, right off the bat. And so sometimes I'll recommend either taking the developer or more commonly something that's better paired with this is actually the security certification. Then people move on to the expert. And if you're looking to do something afterwards, probably look for uh, SAP workloads here, which is a high performance database. So that is the general roadmap uh, for most people uh, with Azure if you're not looking for some kind of specialty or you don't know what you're going to do. Comparing this to other uh, certifications, so you have AWS and GCP, I just want to compare the difficulty so you can figure out, um, you know, if you've already taken these other ones, uh, you know, how much time or, or difficulty will compare, right? So for AWS, I'd say it's two times harder or compared to the GCP, it's three times harder. And the reason why Azure uh, associate certifications are so much more difficult than these other cloud providers is just because it focuses a lot more on practical knowledge. Uh, so I'll give you an example. Uh, a question you could see on the exam would be, how do you set up an Azure file uh, share sync? And you would actually be given a list and you'd have to choose the, uh, the, the steps that would need to be formed and also the correct order. Right, and so that's not something you would really see on an AWS or GCP exam. Uh, and so uh, Azure exams are very much focused on whether you are a practitioner, can you actually do it, as opposed to do you know how to effectively use these services. Um, so you know that could be good or bad depending on the way you look at it. I kind of like the latter, where I'd I'd rather uh, be more focused on the utility as opposed to uh, the practical knowledge, because I feel that you can always. Uh, figure that stuff out. Uh, and this is the purpose of certifications is to give, to give you that broad knowledge so you know how to utilize your services, but that's just how they do it. So uh, how long should you study for the AZ-104? Well, if you have two to three years experience with Azure, you could be as, as little as 12 hours. If you only have one year experience, I'm gonna recommend to you 30 hours. And if you've already passed the AZ-900, uh, you're looking at a whopping 60 hours of study. So that's over 21 days, one to three hours. So that's three weeks of study. Uh, and generally, this is like a week extra uh, for what I would normally recommend at an associate level certification compared to other clouds, but this is just how Azure is. Uh, so where do you take the AZ-104? Well, you have two options. You can do it in person or online. And from there, there's two types of test centers that are available to you. The first one is PSI and the other one is Pearson View. I've used both of them. Um, and so I would always recommend if you have the opportunity, always do it in person because if you do it online, you might run into a lot of trouble where, uh, you know, your computer overheats or you, or you forgot to plug in your, <laughs> your laptop, uh, or let's say uh, your uh, proctored person, they, they lose their connection or you have a connection problem. So, so many things can go wrong online. 
Uh, but if you have to do it because of circumstance, that's totally understandable. Um, but you know, if you can have that controlled environment, it's a lot uh, more, uh, uh, I think you'll do a lot better if you do it in person, okay? And just so you know, if you see the word proctored, that just means a supervisor, a person who monitors your students during an examination, okay? So generally people say online proctored exam, that's where that word comes from, okay? So what does it take to pass this exam? Well, you're gonna be watching lecture videos and memorizing key information. Uh, the second one, I probably should have gave it a lot more emphasis, but you're gonna be doing hands-on labs and follow-alongs within your own Azure account. Uh, even with my course, I, I probably don't have enough, you know what I mean? Because they're always adding stuff uh, and there's just so many things to do. Uh, and so I'd be making this course for a thousand years, but I will kind of point that out when we get into the exam guide breakdown. I'm t like, we'll talk about how Azure frequently updates their exams and that's what makes it really hard. Uh, you'll definitely, definitely, definitely need to use paid online practice exams. Uh, if you're looking for some, I have one bundled with this course. So you're, this course, my video content is always free, uh, but I, I always have uh, additional uh, layered paid content that's here to support the uh, free content that I produce. So, you know, I strongly recommend that you go out and uh, purchase the paid Larry content because it helps me produce more free courses for you. Uh, and also it's just gonna increase your odds of passing the exam, okay? In terms of the content outline, and this is the basically the domains of the exam, which we will look in more detail in the next video here, but we have manage, uh, manage Azure Identities and Governance. I think that's a spelling mistake. There shouldn't be an R on there, so please nobody tell me about that uh, right here, eh? And then we have implement and manage storage, deploy and manage Azure compute resources, configure and manage virtual networks. So notice here we got storage, compute, virtual networking, and this is like IAM, right? So these are the core services. The thing I'm surprised is they didn't put databases in here, but that's okay. Um, so we'll go, oh, sorry, there's one more, monitor, uh, monitor and backup Azure resources, okay? Now the passing grade here is uh, 70%. So I believe they scored out of a thousand points. So you gotta get 700 more points. I put an asterisk around here to emphasize that you need to be around that score. So it's totally possible you could fail with a 70%. So I always recommend, cause it's scaled scoring, right? So I always recommend that you get at least 75, that's your target goal. And so when you're studying, whoops, <laughs> when you're studying, you're, you're looking to get an 85% on your practice exams, okay, before, before you do that, so that hopefully on the real exam, you're gonna be, uh, you have a buffer of 10%, all right? In terms of response types, there are 40 to 60 questions. So that means you can afford to get about 12 to 18 questions wrong. Uh, I put an asterisk here again, because Azure is a bit odd. They don't have consistency across their questions. They have a bunch of different uh, question types, which we'll talk about here in a moment. So some questions are worth more than one point. There is no penalty for wrong, qu wrong questions. So never leave a question blank. And there are some cases where you cannot skip questions. So you might face a, a, a part and you just feel really stressed because <laughs> you want to come back to it, but you just can't. You got to do what's in front of you. In terms of the types of questions, we have multiple choice and multiple answer, which most people are, are common with. But what's uh, unique here is we got drag and drop, hot areas, which is basically mat, uh, concept matching, and case studies. And case studies is really interesting because what they do is they give you a business scenario. So they give you a bunch of text to read with a, a huge breakdown. And then they ask you a series of questions all relating back to that, uh, uh, that case, okay? And so that's what I mean when I put an asterisk where I say, uh, you know, you can get X amount of questions wrong or there's more than one points because we have these uh, different types and this really throws us uh, for a loop, okay? In terms of the duration, you have uh, three hours, which is a very, very long time to study. Uh, and so again, take this with a grain of salt, but you know, if, if it was just multiple choice and multiple answer, that'd be one minute per study. Your exam time is 180 minutes, uh, but that's not the time that you should allocate. You should, you should make sure that you are blocking off um, 210 minutes, that's just 30 minutes on top of that because for your seat time, that means it refers to the time you should allocate for the exam. So things like time to review the instructions, read and accept the NDA, complete the exam and provide feedback at the end. Now, once you get the certification, it's gonna be valid for 24 months. So that's two years before recertification. And I believe that Azure has some kind of way that you can get recertified for free. I think they have like some kind of like thing you can do online for that. So. Um, I don't have that slide here today, but uh, maybe I'll add it into the course later. Uh, but I just want you to know that if, if you do get this, you probably can renew for free, uh, but you'd have to do some kind of a reassessment test or something, okay? So there you go.